What's up, everyone? Uh, this is weekend mentoring for June 18th, my birthday. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. Um, just to start, I always kind of go over this for all the new members. Um, uh, we want to see the full chart. If your idea is off a, a, you know, a pre-market line, don't show us right after the open. We want to see the pre-market data. We want to see the whole day. Uh, we want to see the chart kind of zoomed out, not completely zoomed in, but not zoomed out so far that you can't see the executions. You got to just uh, make sure that it's not too zoomed out, not too zoomed in, uh, not too blurry. Show us the price on the side, not too cropped. We're looking for the bigger picture, you know, what your uh, trade idea was based off of. We want to be able to see that resistance line. We want to be able to see that idea. Um, show the volume on the bottom, please. Please show the timeline on the bottom. Um, obviously, losing charts, there's always going to be a lesson. They're, in my opinion, better than winning charts because there's usually a lesson or something to learn from. But uh, if you want to submit winning charts, that's okay too. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, we want to see the lines that you're using and uh, that's it. Perfect. Um, so we're going to start off with a long since it's my birthday. Um, and this is kind of what I see on this one. This one's kind of pretty easy to go over, first of all. I mean, here's what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, when I'm, when I'm looking at this chart, right? Um, we're seeing kind of the pre-market, it's dead. It's not a hot chick. We're not really doing much volume. Um, it's not really what I'd be kind of looking for as far as, uh, um, you know, as far as a long to me, there's just not really much going on. Um, so I, I would avoid this chart for long. Um, you know, just when I'm kind of looking at it, to me, it looks like we're not really doing much volume down at the bottom. It's under a hundred K. Um, I know sometimes bounces will get supported. Like he's like, uh, you know, Siga, Siga held nicely on the daily looking for bounces. But to me, this is just dead. We're not really doing much volume. Uh, looks like some large cells kind of came in at the open. Yeah, it just not really for me. Top is set in the chart. Uh, you just want to avoid this. Again, look, VWAP is way up here. We, we can't even push past the pre-market VWAP. Looks to me more like low-hanging fruit. Yes, you may get a multi-day runner, but right now, to me, multi-day runners are not the good pattern, right? Uh, to me, what's been working for longing has been day one hot chick, um, there might be like a, an AREC or something that pops up after zombie that starts to do like, you know, good enough volume to, to, to start moving higher. But here, obviously near zombie time, I mean, we're 1030. We're not really doing that much volume. Top is already set there. Anyone who short this is not going to be covering here. Right. So it's just to me, no trade, avoid the stock, avoid the ticker. If you're not good at day one tickers and you're not consistent at day one tickers, the uh, low volume, uh, low hanging fruit is not going to be uh, where you're going to be successful. Tommy. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I'm not a good long bash trader, but it's like I always kind of follow one thing. Uh, you know, and it's, it helps me a lot when it comes to shorting or like longing the stock, right? I mean, to me, this is like top is set kind of chart, you know, looks like broken. And you can tell the, the, the trend here is right. It's like, it's going down. If you want to long something, you want to see the stock grinds like this. Okay, whatever. It's like, you can clearly tell he is down, he is up, right? You know, yeah. follow that trend. And it's like, it's going to help you much more than trying to guess yourself, you know, if that's a good long setup or not. You know, this is, you know, pretty clear to me that's a short, okay? It's like, I, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't short it, but I definitely wouldn't long this kind of stuff. So, you know, as you can see here, you know, it's like every pop getting sold into and, you know, big stuff here, like this is the, the big stuff. You, you don't want to be long into that kind of stock. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you trap, let it trap first. Okay. You want to see the trap first up yeah. here and then you can always long up here and risk over this, but let's see the trend changes first, right? Wait for that confirmation before. You know, it's better than trying to guess yourself here, guess yourself here, and then you know, you know, end up stopping out. 
Uh, so, you know, that's my opinion on it. That's all. Yep. I love that. So let me add to both of you guys. So Harry, if you could pull up what I just posted, I made it very clear for everyone to understand the two days of that day. So this is going to be a two day chart. Um, this is so fucking broken, dude. This is so not a long Harry. Can you see what I pulled up in um, the chat? Yeah. Can you okay. see, can you see it on the, I, I cannot. Hmm. Is there a way? Cause man, I'd love to show people this. Oh. <laughs> it's really important for this lesson because we're a little zoomed in on this example, uh, which is okay. Work? Does this work? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, guys. So that's what I just posted in the chat. So uh, let me, let me annotate something right here. Hold on. Let me figure out how to do that. again. <laughs> I totally, I, for, I forget every single week. This is where, can you guys see my blue? This is where the trade happened. Are you fucking kidding me? You're longing this after this? Bro, are you, like, are you kidding? You're kidding, right? I have to be brutal on this one. What in God's name looks like a long on this chart? Yeah. And, and, I, and I'm going to be brutal only because I think that that's the only way to learn. There is so not a long in this. It's, it's like insanity. There's nothing about this that goes, hey, let me long this stock. So remember what I say every single week, you know, the whole thing that you should start with in trading is keep it as simple as possible. Take a bird's eye view, guys. Take a bird's eye. Does this even look like it would resonate as a long? Oh, okay, it doesn't. Well, why doesn't it? Oh, it does look like it'll resonate as a long. Okay, now let's go into why. Guys, literally it takes one second to pull up a chart like this and go, there's no long in this chart. Or at least, or at least, if you do long and make money, your odds were about as slim as sliced ham. Yeah. So my point is, I want you guys to keep it as simple as possible. And believe me, I made all these mistakes in the beginning too. I wish I would have pulled back a couple day chart instead of just zooming in pre-market because in pre-market, you can't tell shit, right? Like you, yeah, there's overhead, but who knows where it started? Who knows where it came from? Maybe there is a bounce in it. When you pull back to two or three days, you go, dude, I am so fighting trend here. Like, like I deserve the loss, right? And again, I'm only blunt with you because I want you to learn. There's, there's longing. This is insane. It's insane. Yeah. That's, that's my, that's my two cents. Yeah. It's just too broken for a long. And the thing is, is that there may be multi-day tickers that, that pick up, right. That reverse trend, but the odds are significantly against you. It doesn't happen that often, right? Everyone's trying to, it's like a needle in a haystack. Yeah, man. I mean, I mean, the, the, the only thing going through investors' heads on this, well, investors, when I say just traders, the only thing going through traders' heads is, hey, there's either a short in this or I don't trade it long. Like no, nobody's thinking, let me catch a bounce on this. Somebody is thinking if it gets high enough, I'll short. And the other guys are like, honestly, I have to wait for a hot chick because not only does this have really no volume on the day that you long, which is, you know, it's okay. Learn from this. There's really no volume. There's really no participation. It's definitely not a hot chick. So the best longs, again, let's keep it simple, are stuck making highs with a lot of demand, with a lot of volume. And it's like just from a bird's eye, it'll take you one second to go, oh, this is strong. Then we go, is there a bounce in here? Can I cap? Sure that bounce yeah honestly it's so weak i don't even know if i'd want to short it because there's just not not too much meat so i it's think like, you know? <laughs> i think this dude trying to guess the bottom it's like the same thing when trying to guess the top right but you know on the short side but long side i think the things and you know it's down too much it's got to bounce right but you know don't do that okay that's how you're gonna get killed yeah, the only way that works, guys, is believe me, I'm a very big switch hitter these days in 2022 when it comes to big caps and small caps. Let me fucking tell you, if you're ever in the mindset of, hey, this is oversold, let me look for a bounce, big caps, not SIGA, not SIGA, what, what is this company? It's, ter it's a shell of a company. You do that on NVIDIA. Me and Alex did that on Apple, Facebook, Amazon, and Tesla. And yeah, we're down right now, but we're down on some of the best companies in the world. And we honestly got pretty good averages. It's just the economy is so shit that the averages are a little bit lower than we wanted in their long-term investments. But that thinking does not apply to small caps and SIGA. Yeah. Like, hey, this is so on sale. Let me capture it. No fucking way. Yeah, I agree. All right, so let's move to the next one. Um, yep uh this is uh so this is viru this is the bigger picture that i knew tosh would look for on something like this something on sega i was just like eh. but this is the bigger picture so what circled is the day that uh um the day that 
he traded it on. Um, and this is his his uh, his chart short. So thank you for I, pulling that up, Harry. Thank you for uh, adding that. Awesome. No problem. No problem. It's just a pain to go back and forth on some of these bigger picture ones. Um, totally. So obviously, to me, here's what I see. I see. Yes, I do see a resistance line at 15. Right. Where would the next line be? Probably the 16 whole number. Right. So if you want to take a stab at 15, that's all right. And then I would wait for 16 if I get stopped out. That would just be uh, my plan on this if I was wanting to short it. Obviously, yes, top is set. Um, but here is the, the problem is that this member just too much FOMO, right? Starts adding at 1550 or, you know, starts adding maybe like 1520, keeps adding to 1550. Finally, his idea works out at 16 and he covers lower, but you can tell in his write up, he's like, you know, uh, started FOMO, entering early. Uh, you know, he, he started way too soon. He started scaling at 15 for a 16 line, right? I think if you have an idea in trading, it's really, really best to wait for that idea to, to come, right? To wait for that line to come rather than uh, saying, oh, well, I think 16 is going to be the top, but I'm going to start scaling at 15. Like if you, you know, walk to a fucking mirror and, and look at yourself and say, my plan is 16 line, but I want to short at 15. You would laugh at yourself. Like the clown emoji would appear on yourself, you know? So I think what you should do is this 15 line's great. You attacked it. You nailed the win. Now let's wait higher for 16 line instead of starting to scale at like 15, 20, all the way to 16, right? Just too much FOMO. Wait for your plan. Wait for your line. Um, and that's what I would, I would recommend. Only Bao gets away with that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, get, let's go back to the bigger picture, Harry, real quick. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was a long at first, then I saw it was a short. I was going to say, if it was a long, I actually kind of like this dude longing because as we can see, it's not breaking down on the daily. But then I realized he shorted and I was like, okay, if you're going to short something, again, when you take the bird's eye and you see this, uh, I'll try to annotate a little bit. I'm so terrible with this annotation. But now you can see it's not breaking down. It's kind of picking up even the day yeah. before, even after hours, even pre-market. I don't like this random short unless you're waiting for the outermost, which is right there, right? So not the in-between, like Harry was saying, the second line. Now, if we go back into the intraday, um, let's go back in there really quick, Harry. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, sir. Uh I only short under VWAP, guys, and only above VWAP, 30% like Alex, if we have some overhead. So let's say that this is pre-market. I'll try to draw that. Pre-market. And then this is the intraday and the outer lines. To do all this on price discovery over VWAP, you are asked. I'm not saying you're begging for a loss because that's extreme. The last example, maybe, maybe the guy's begging for a loss longing a super broken stock. You're not begging for a loss here, but you are playing with bear traps and landmines. You're saying this could absolutely fail at 15 and then 16, but I am playing with bear traps. There's not a crazy amount of overhead. And most importantly, there's not a crazy amount of, like I said last week or the, or the last session we did, yeah. There's not a crazy amount of immediate edge with yeah. the pre-market, with the intraday, the super overhead. So the fact that this is just kind of chipping along on the daily and then guys blast through VWAP. I, look, I know you did the whole half dollar number, which I do really love. I, like I'm saying, it's not a, it's not a terrible trade. It's just, you got away with playing with bear traps and it is dangerous, brother. It is dangerous, but I do like the way you did utilize the whole and half dollars as much as you can. I know you got a little stuck right here, but you definitely added right here, which is like what Bao does. So it's yeah. not terrible, but just know this, this is, this is going to make your journey a lot harder if you keep looking for trades like this, because you're going to win one, you're going to give it back. You're going to win one, you're going to give it back. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And I think, um, you know, in between the lines is just noise, right? So if you want to tr trade some at 15 line, no one's stopping you. If you want to trade some at 16 line, no one's stopping you. But the shit in between those lines, you're just making up. That's what Yeah, I that's, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah. Tommy? Because but Harry's right. Because honestly, if you're playing line to line, that would have been a cut from this re-entry. Do you see yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. That yeah. would have been the cut. And then you would have attacked here again at 16. That's called line to line trading. Not let me add, let me add. Oh shit. Oh shit. Okay. Let me get my average up. Let me get, oh, thank God. Do you see what I'm saying? So that's what Harry is saying in line to line. It's like, dude, the 15, awesome. Right. 
Now you need to either hit and immediately cut for an attack at 16, but adding all the way up, it's it's just dangerous. It's just dangerous. Bow's the only one I know that's gotten away with it for two decades. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, but Bow doesn't scale like every five, 10 cents here. Uh, the one thing I don't get is that how many shares are you using? Okay. Are you using like 100,000 shares or like, you know, like big size so that you need to scale every five to 10 cents here? I mean, it just really doesn't make sense to me. Uh, you know, if you want to, you know, to your chart to look good, to show that you, know, you have so many bullets here, uh, I mean, you know, that's, that's really up to you. But by doing so, you know, just be honest with yourself, okay? By doing this, you're not going to be profitable. I can tell that from the chart, okay? I, I don't care what your average was, but I can tell you, like, you know, by trading like this, at best, you are break even. Okay, at best, yeah. if you have like cheap locates, you know, pay for the commissions and fees, this is at best. But, you know, as you can see here, when you win, it's really like minimal, like break even. But when you lose, if the ship teleports to like 17 or 18, you don't fucking max loss. Like, That's very well said. Worse. So well said. Yeah, worse even, you know, after this trade, you're going to revenge. So it's like probably blow up too. Like if you don't have the discipline, okay? So just be careful with that, guys. Pick out one good line, one good stop. You know, you can always get back in. Like 15, stop out here. 16, stop out here. So be it, right? The one shit's working, add it more. So to, you know, to have more size. But if you are using really small size, you don't have to scale every five or 10 cents. Who yeah. cares if your chart looks good or not? Are you profitable? That's the main question. Well, big, Tom, right? Big size or small size, guys. Don't don't scale every five cents. You're just going to get in trouble, small and big size. Like there, there's reasons to scale. There's reasons to click that short button again. And it should be pre-planned. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, let's move on to the next one. Um, so this one is a little bit hard. I'm going to try to uh, show everyone where the entries is. This is what we mean by blurry charts. Like you don't need to add this. Um, you can write this in your write-up, but you know, uh, basically he went long here, ended up kind of stopping out right here. Uh, that was his kind of first bounce. Um, I think for me, uh, wrong image, sorry, he said, okay. Yeah. I think for me, um, it again is coming down to what is your target and what is your risk reward? Okay. To me on this type of first bounce trade, I see a line right here. Actually, I'm going to draw using the, the, the lines. Um, but to me, I see a line right here for first bounce, like a cell right here. And I see a cell right here. And those are my lines. If you are just you're, like, this is just, you, you know, you're not sticking to your plan. Like you, you have to have some balls to say, okay, this is my plan. This is where I'm getting in. This is where I'm getting out. And this is where I'm stopping out. And you need to stick to that. Just like, did, did you pre-plan your trade for break even? Probably not, right? And so your idea is working out every single time and you're not there to take advantage of it because you're too scared. So you're either using too much size. I mean, if you are scared with 50 shares, go down to fucking one share. I mean, that's just it. If you're scared with 50 shares, go down to like one or two shares so you can start learning the price action and learning the lines. Because to me, this is just... Uh, you know, you're, you're getting in right here and you're cutting a few minutes later and you're not giving the time or you're not giving the trade time to work out, but also you're not sticking to your plan. Where did like, is your stop break even? Are you going to say right when I get in, I'm going to exit, you know? So you need to have your, uh, and also do not move your risk around when you're in the trade, stick to your plan, risk an appropriate amount and say, okay, when I get in, I'm either selling at my target, at my line, or I'm stopping out and that's it. That is trading. If you cannot handle being in a trade for more than, uh, I don't know, uh, let's say, uh, fuck, I don't know, like five minutes, then, you know, you're, you're going to have a problem trading, right? You know, this, you have to spend time in, in, in the trade, right? That's just it. It takes a certain amount of time to work out. So 
either you're having the fear of loss, which is probably coming from you using too much size. I mean, go down to like 10 shares then and start working your way up because this just isn't working out for you. Like your career as a trader, it's going to be cut short before it begins because you just can't handle the pressure in a trade. So to me, it's like, you write your plan down on a sticky note or a notepad and you stick to it and that's it. And if you can't stick to it, do not move your risk around. Do not fucking start doing these trailing stop things. Just literally stick to your plan. And if you can't do that, then, I mean, you can't be, you can't be a trader. That's just it. Yep. Uh, I'll add to that. All right, guys, this is the first thing I noticed with this. So I'm going to put on my boxing gloves just a little bit, but I'm not going to be brutal on you because it doesn't require it. But this is the Da Vinci Code, bro. This is too much. This is overthinking. There should not be this much to jot down in a trade like this. You're in a little early. I can tell you oversized, and here's why. Right here in the trade where you stopped out and got in and stopped out, this is only about 25, maybe 30 cents once I eyeballed it. That's 25 cents, and you didn't give it a VWAP. So remi remind you, I don't long anymore. I built, you know, my whole early accounts, you know, three accounts in the beginning on first bounces before I even knew shorting. I didn't even know what it was called back then. If you're going to long right here and not at least give it to VWAP or at least just under, I think you're shooting yourself in the foot. And like I said, if there's only 25 cents here, which is not a ton of range, you know, this could have been a chart where it showed two or $3. So I get it. And I'd be more lenient. But to get in here and then a stop out, uh, well, wherever you did, it's a little blurry, sorry. To stop out wherever you did and not give it VWAP, you're oversized, brother, because this is not $3 in the range. This is 25 cents. You're way oversized. So, you know, if I was longing again, which I don't anymore because I'm just so much more comfortable shorting on small cast, but when I did, you bet your ass I'm not getting in here and not at least risking a VWAP hold. Dude, the stock's over VWAP all morning and you're not going to at least let it like prove that it can hold VWAP? Come on, come on. That's the clear indication of a trend is the VWAP hold and the deviation. So I think it's an unnecessary stop out, but I get it because you were probably oversized and then we don't think clearly. That's that's my two cents. I, may, maybe Harry has something to, to um, disagree with on that, but that's my. No, no I agree uh on this one uh you know i like the thesis uh you know for long we, as you can see you know the trend is just grinding higher right so it's perfect uh nothing wrong with that taking long but i just don't get why you i mean scaling into the entry here right that your average might be somewhere around like six probably and then you sold into the six. Yeah. This is not the stops, okay, guys? This is not he's stopping out. He's taking the profit, but your average is around six and you selling at six. So why did you get in in that trade in the first place? And why you scale, you know, down your average? It's like, you know, like pretty much like adding to your loser, uh, want to kind of <clears throat> bring down your average when you're long. Uh, but I just don't get it because I can, I open your chart, you post it in the weekend entering <clears throat> and I can see your average is somewhere around here, six. And then sold into this, probably six too. So like break even on this trade or, you know, like you're not losing. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. But it's just yeah. like, why you trying to like or like you you are afraid of losing back or like you know you are afraid of you know losing back the profits or you know like you should have a plan in the first place right, right. you're gonna like, get in yeah, here yeah yeah gonna so scale in here and i'm gonna stop out here i mean you should have a plan if you are scaling if not then just one bullet and stop here you know whatever okay but have a plan at least Cause, That's cause, my opinion. Yeah. Tom, Tom, I see what you're saying. Cause it, it, it almost looks side like as if you were scared of a death candle coming through VWAPs. You're like, okay, let me get out before it. And like, obviously not hold the plan of VWAP. Like Tom was saying, it's, it's like, you were like, it's like, I can see your emotion in this. Like, you're like, okay, I'm in this trade. Oh shit. It's a little lower than I wanted. Okay. Okay. I'll add like I'm in. Oh fuck. What if a death candle comes, man? And then like you got out. Cause like you were scared of what you're anticipating. That's what it looks like. Yeah, just yeah, risk like my risk price. was too tight on this trade, but it's like, bro, like your risk is your fucking uh, entry. 
It's what it We're is. professional risk takers, man. You got to risk. You got to risk. No, something. this is this is not like your risk. You are selling selling for for the profit here. You know, like like the, you you selling it too soon, pretty much. Yeah. Right. This is not like the stock is not stopping you out, but you trying to get out. Yeah, that's what I can see from the chart, because it's like, you know, if I'm long here, long here, and, you know, I put a hard stop here when it starts come down, it's going to trigger. Right. That's what, that's the stop. But this one scale, scale, scale here. And then you sold into like the small minimal kind of push. But it's you know, like, it's a, dude, it's a great thesis. The long was there, bro. It was yeah, really the long was there. I love the thesis. Great you know, trend. It, this is like you know, compared to the other chart when it's like, like this, heck no, right? But this is like straight up. I mean, it's grinding, grinding. It's perfect for long. Fantastic thesis of a trade. You just got to manage your your risk and your comfort levels better. Buddy. Exactly. Okay. Give the stock enough room to work for you. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. Awesome. All right, let's move on to the next. And uh, we don't mean to be hard on you. Like on this trade, we don't mean to be hard on you, but like this is just this for us, this is really just what we would want to be told if if I took this trade. Like I'd want someone to be completely brutal and and honest with me and be like, Harry, you're a dumbass. Like if someone called if some like I would appreciate when I was on the come up. Tosh destroying me because I'd be like, okay, um, this is what I need to hear to get better, right? Sorry, man. I got on the phone with James for like the first three months and ripped him a new one every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you idiot. <laughs> I was like, good, good. More for me and you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, what oh, shit. Exactly. All right. So this just one, just one last thing I'm going to add, Harry. Sorry about that. Go ahead. Uh, this is like, you are afraid of losing back the profit, okay? The trade was like you pr pretty much like red on that trade and now you see green. I don't want to see that red anymore. So that's the urge, okay? And, you know, this is the problem for a lot of traders. They are afraid of losing back the profit. But in reality, if you're going to do this in the long run, you're going to lose it back anyway. So it's yeah. dumb as fuck, okay? Just follow your plan or whatever. Risk yeah. reward, that's all. Exactly. Yes, sir. All right. So on something like this, um, this is, uh, um, I guess the setup is, I'm not sure, sure what this is. I think it's day one. Um, uh, this is where I'm just going to start. Number one, I'm going to start with the range. Okay. So we have the top of the range at 274. We have the bottom of the range at 230. In my opinion, if I was trying to become profitable as a short seller, I would want to go short near the outer lines at the top half of the range. This is where you will find your best shorts. Now, going closer to the middle or bottom of the range is, in my opinion, where you will have a, a lower win rate, right? You try it there, you end up getting stopped out. You end up shorting into the outer lines, they end up working, and you go lower, and that is really what I see a lot of people in weekend mentoring kind of get stuck in, right? I mean, the bottom of the range is 230 and you're going short at 240. That to me is a bit of a problem. Um, but like, I, you know, you tried it, but also the stock is also telling you, hey, bro, I'm not breaking down. I'm not breaking down, not breaking down, not breaking down. I stuffed. I'm still not breaking down. I mean, this has given you like, what, how many minutes is this? Just channeling in between VWAP, not going anywhere, bottom of the range. That's difficult. Now he ends up stopping out, getting back in, and that ended up kind of working for him. But to me, you know, this, this short, it's like, okay, but like you gave it too long, should have just covered. I mean, where do you think it's going to go? There's not really that much meat. I mean, you're shorting here at 250 to get like 230, right? So again, to me, I would avoid shorting bottom of the range. Um, and in situations like this, where it's not breaking down at the bottom of the range, definitely cover out and just wait for higher. He ended up kind of getting rewarded up here. Um, and, and that ended up being kind of it. But to me, just don't short near the bottom of the range and wait for higher, wait for that pop. You're going to get rewarded every single time instead of these kind of FOMO entries. And if you do take a FOMO entry, you know, 
and the stock is not breaking down and it's just channeling in between view app. Just wait for higher. Uh, that's all I got to say. Oh, I'm about to have a field day, man, because th- there couldn't be a more perfect chart for me to annotate on what's wrong with this and how you can fix it. Dude, what do I say every single Wednesday for the last five fucking years? You have only two entry points in this stock. There's one and then there's two. Let me explain. The stock from this point to open has, so which is about an hour, which is picture perfect, has not touched VWAP and it's opening far from its highs. Number one, we're opening far from our highs. That's extreme overhead. Number two, it's opening way under VWAP and hasn't touched VWAP within an hour. Those are the two criteria. Where do you short? Always, always, always on a VWAP push. Then you can scale as high as you want to scale, whatever. That's up to you. But this is the account builder. This is how I built accounts when I first started really establishing a process on my short accounts. You should not be chasing this. You should not be hitting here. You should be covered here and here and here and wrapped up for the day. Because guess what's here? Zombie hour. And then if you do short after zombie hour, this is the only fucking place you should even touch. And if you touch anything under that, you're an idiot because you have no short edge. So number one, what do I say every single week for five years? This is the guaranteed moneymaker. You will build an account if you play this stock chart and then just walk the F away. But if you're a degenerate asshole, which we all are, and I even am too, if you have to get the outer lines, you better during zombie hour better be hitting the outermost lines. I rest my case. This is so, this could have been so perfectly a perfect chart. I promise you, bro. I swear to God, this one chart will make you as much money as you can discipline, you know, disciplinely give yourself in your trading. This is a guaranteed moneymaker, but you have to hit it at the right areas and cut off and walk away. This is the moneymaker chart. This is the chart that'll make you a fucking million dollars, but you just did it a little bit wrong. Just a little bit, just, just fine tune it. This is, oh man, it couldn't be more picture perfect, dude. This is the chart, guys. This is the fucking chart. Yeah, uh, on this one. Uh, Sorry, let me get rid of my annotation. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just don't understand why he didn't short into this push at 250 here, which is you know, one and a half little mark. Perfect, you could get 20 cents here, but you waited for. I mean, yes, I know you want to be safe, you want to you know, wait for stuff, but why are you short it here more? Uh, and uh, the cut here should have been here instead of all the way up here. You know, like you don't need to waste that much, you know, like maybe stopping out here, stop over that 250 here. 260, that's a good, you know, trade. This trade I like much more because you waited for the outer lines and you add on the confirmation. This is the trade you're looking for. And yes, the risk reward on this is it's pretty good. But the first one, not really. And if you look at the chart, there's really not much meat. Like this is like pretty much the bottom. Uh, so if you short down here, you might get like five cents, you know, so zoom out the chart and see the bigger picture. And, you know, from, from there you can have your plan, but, but this one was solid. This one was solid. I like it. Should have helped some here, but you know, it's, it's all good. Great trade. But the first one, you know, be careful next time. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Also one thing I want to mention on the whole slippage thing Slippage is like when you're using bigger size. I'm not sure how much size this guy's using, but you know, if you're using 50 shares, you're not really going to get any slippage. You know, I see this on Twitter all the time where these, like these guys blame it on slippage. I'm like, bro, if it like, I think a lot of people are using slippage as an excuse for their bad stop losses. So now everyone just magically thinks everyone gets slippage. Like if I'm in a, uh, you know, 10, 20,000 shares on a, on a ticker. Yeah. I expect to get slipped a little bit. Right. But if you're friggin' using, yeah. If you're using underneath five 
100 shares, like you're not really going to get any slippage. So like I, I see on Twitter all the time, like people are like, man, I got slipped. And then I'm like, well, how many shares are you using? And they're like, oh, well, 25. I'm like, bro, man, your hard stop's going to execute at that price if you have a hard stop in. So, I mean, I think a lot of people are blaming uh, slippage um, on just, you know, their, their, their hard stops that are like, you know, the, the hard stops that they're not setting, right? If you don't set a hard stop underneath high a day or near high a day, and then we keep breaking up higher, that's not slippage. That's the goddamn stock moving higher over hard of high a day, right? So, I mean, there's something to be said for that too. I think a lot of people are blaming slippage on them just not setting hard stops, right? Yeah, I, I, I'll add to that really quick, Harry. On a stock with given range like this, guys, if you have anything under 5,000 shares, do not complain about slippage. Don't even think about slippage. Yeah. Under 5,000 shares on a stock with this range. Now, let's say it had a massive amount of range. Obviously, 5,000 shares you're probably not going to be putting on. That's very different. Um, but, you know, just, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about slippage if you're if you're somewhat of a small size player, which is okay. Not that 5,000 is small. I'm just saying in the scheme of things, like players in the market, that's, that's guppy size. So, and I'm not saying like guys within MIC, I mean the whole like wall street. It's, yeah. it's, it's guppy size, 5,000 shares. It's, there's no slip. Yeah. Or it's that's, just not your focus. <laughs> just so we cleared that up. Like I, I, people shouldn't be focusing on slippage. They should be just focusing on proper hard stop placement, right? You know, if, if you don't have to set a hard stop at high a day, and the thing keeps on going, you're not getting slipped. I'll tell you what, who is getting slipped are the people short underneath that that are now forced to stop out. Those are the people getting <laughs> yeah. slipped. Hell yeah. They're forcing the stock higher, you know? Um, so anyway, yeah. So, okay. Let's, uh, let's keep moving on. <laughs> UEG, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I use slippage as an excuse in bed all the time. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fuck. I thought that was going to be a trading thing. <laughs> God damn. I just got slipped right there. <laughs> you got Rick. I just slipped. got real life slippage, folks. Um, yeah, this one I think is a good one. Got a little bit lucky on whatever this was. But uh, other than that, uh, good trade. Uh, dude, yeah. What's there to say? You shorted the channel, which is perfect. You know, you short like literally like this is the channel that Bow would have been hitting all day. And if you said you planned for this, you're totally crazy. You just got you got a cherry on top, but great trade. Yeah. Tommy Poo. Yeah, I was a uh, answering to that member question. Hard stop is always market, guys. OK, don't use limit. Diesel man, his name is same as mine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hot stop, uh, you know, market always. And you, you using trade zero range order. If you shorting, if you put it on a high price, that's uh, the stop for a mar market stop. And the low price is going to be your limit order, pretty much like to cover. Yeah, okay. the reason why market guys is because it's damn near 99% of the time guaranteed a stop out. So yeah. when you do a limit, if it blows past it, sometimes you don't get filled. And now instead of, you know, obviously a market order is going to fill where it can a lot of the time. Um, what do you want to lose in an extra five to 20 cents depending yep. on range? Or do you want it to blow through your limit order and then it runs $2 and you're like, holy shit, I could have stopped out with 15 cents slippage, you know, this whole slippage fucking shit that everybody's talking about. But no, it's just, it's just, look, I stopped out, fill me out, get me out immediately. I'm willing to risk an extra 20 cents that I didn't anticipate at the chance of not getting blown away $2 or $3 if this continued going. And maybe you're on the beach. Maybe you set a stop and you went to the beach, but if you set a market order, you're going to get out. If you set a limit order, you just got eaten by a shark in the price action. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I just want to get the fuck out. Don't worry yeah, too much man. about slippage. I mean, it's just again, stupid. You trying to save few cents and then you're, you know, end up blowing up the account. So, yeah, uh, yeah. On this one, HTCR, you know, it's. I'm not sure about this trade. Uh, you know, I mean, it looks good. You got the win here. You know, after the wash, it looks looks cool, right? But. If you look at the chart, it's it's really on the front side, grinding higher. Uh, you know, it's this is like if I want to short something like this, I probably I I wouldn't be able to use much size to begin with. Also, here zombie time. Look at this after ten thirty. You know, it's you know not not really my edge. 
uh, in my opinion. Uh, you know, this is also a view app. It's like stock is grinding higher. Uh, yeah, it's nice. You got a big stuff after that. You know, it's it's good. Right? It looks good. Uh, but, you know, overall in the long run, it's, it's really dangerous. I mean, if you have tight stop, but I can see if you stopping out over 320, which is 40 cents, right? And you made probably 40 cents too. Like that's the best case, one on one. To me, that's not good risk reward. Uh, maybe if I want to short something here, maybe add into the support and holding for the old day fader, maybe to 1.8 or two, then yes, but uh, not, just not for me. But, uh, you know, oh, good. You want so, oh, good. Just be careful next time. That's all. All right. Everyone's wrapped up on this one. Um, yeah, so this is what I'll kind of say on this one. I know everyone else is going to say the same thing. So, um, uh, in a situation like this, he's like set up low hanging fruit. Who knows if it actually was or not? Like, I'm not really sure. I know Tosh is probably already looking it up. Um, yeah, you really want to be kind of one and done, right? You get a pop, you cover, you know, he ended up adding back to this one. Didn't work. Adding again, didn't work, you know? And then ended up waiting for the, till the top was set. And like, that was really about it. But I think that like on, you know, these types of trades, we could have eliminated this one here. It, despite like great stops, it's just, I wouldn't, it's not a trade I would have taken. Also the fact that it took so long to break down underneath here. Uh, you know, we're obviously not going lower. So what's the ticker PBTS on uh, Friday, June 10th. Um, you know, so again, yeah, uh, Tom's right. You know, 20 cents on a dollar stock, you know, you, you're, you're up a decent amount. I would take it off here. Um, but then just reattacking and trying on, on this side, just wait till the top is set. Uh, you know, this trade, obviously a good one, but again, on something like this, uh, you're better just to wait for the one and done and not go back instead of trying to fight, trying to fight. I mean, the hot, hard stops are great. It's just like, do you really want to be involved, right? Do you want to take that extra risk? For me, not really. I'd rather just make my money uh, and and leave, right? And and not, and not stick around on a, on a setup like this, low-hanging fruit. When we start to grind higher, this is abnormal price action. And again, I'll say it another time. I think the trade after the top is set is okay, despite it being kind of, you know, after zombie. I think it's, it's all right. But again, you know, you could have just major 20% here and not screwed around. And the only reason why you're taking this trade is because you had two screw ups on these ones. You're probably pissed, right? So yeah. Oh shit. Uh, yeah. Cu couple, couple things to note, you know, this is the, okay. There's really good in this. And then there's just, again, let's fine tune it. Right. This is great. Uh, hold on. Let me annotate shit. I don't know why it takes it away each time. Okay. This first one is great, bro. But I only touched the first one, the first jump, uh, on a day two, because this is a day two. I looked it up on the day. Like, this is what it looks like, guys. So, um, you know, you can see in the chat that Dimitri just posted. I like it in the beginning uh, the, that the initial jump, probably, you know, a pivot line, I'd have to pull up the pivot lines. But I never hit again on a day two. I, I'm very different that way. I get my one and done. So, like, this I just wouldn't have been a part of personally. Sometimes they work out. Val sometimes does. I definitely wouldn't have kept adding or trying. Um, it's up to you to wait for the breakdown. Then like Val always does, here's this uh, resistance. You shorten this resistance. That's actually really good. This whole thing is good right here. I still wouldn't have done it on a day two. I only focus on the first morning push into an outer line. But the underlying here is the thing I don't like. It's basically a dollar stock. There's no range. And there's a lot of manipulation with these ones that are like 90 cents to like a dollar 20. So just based on that, I just don't like that. Uh, but the one move that I, if I ever do play a do, day two, it's only that, let me get the outer line. Let me cover the wash. And then I'm not back in these. I don't like staying anything after 15 to 20 minutes, uh, which I guess would be like around this mark on a day two. I just don't like it because this could, this could all be manipulation specifically on a stock that's so close to $1. They yeah. try to hold a dollar guys and they'll try to do anything they can to hold a dollar. So I, you know, I, I, I think there's some good stuff in this. Um, I just think that there was a little too much activity, to be honest. 
but I, I'm really curious to see what Tom would have to say on this. Yeah, uh, on this one, Tosh, if you could remove that. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's like, I mean, this dog gave you pretty much everything you need for the low hanging fruit. Okay, this is like we are preaching about it every, like almost every single day. Red to green, get exactly to that line. Right? Even though this is not like, like ideal low hanging fruit because it's not completely broken yet, but the stock is still giving you the pop at open. First 15 minutes, right? First 15 minutes window, that's your low hanging fruit. Like exactly like the pop you want it to that red to green line. You add it here, but it's like 20 cents on $1 stock, bro. What more do you want? It's like after this, I just don't, you know, this is like to me, it's dead. I don't care about that. If your edge is low hanging fruit, that's your window. Okay. Time it right. Trading is really all about timing. Size the fuck up here. Okay. Like when the stock is popping, size up and cover in the wash and be done. One good trade, that's all you need. Like, why you have to add it more here and stopping out here and try to guess here? It's like there's no edge after that, right? And after this, it's like, you know, top is set. You, you can use whatever in your mind after that, you know, like find an excuse to make a trade. But this is like not a good product, like, you know, <clears throat> good setup to make money over the, in the long run. You know, 1030 here, look at the volume. It's like, to me, you know, on this one, that's really the window to make money after that i don't care yeah okay that's this is not going to be sustainable way uh you know in the long run you're not going to be consistent uh with this but with this one in the first 15 minutes if you can get that like not a lot of low-hanging fruit you know they, they even pop at all lately so this is like pretty much like my a plus setup if i get the pop at open to that red to green line. So, and you execute it perfectly. It's just like too greedy, but you all, you you, you uh, weren't using, like using, you know, size. So that's why you wanted to, you know, add more in and then you end up stopping out. Yeah, that's my two cents. All right. I'll go down this one, everyone. Yep, very good. I, I totally agree with Tom, and we pretty much said the exact same thing. Yeah, there's that there's that initial opportunity, guys, but you have to be careful about overstaying. So just remember that. AREC, uh, this was a long. Um, yeah, I think that the these uh, these are good trades. I know it's probably like multi day type of setup, top is set, whatever. But th this kind of grinding on VWAP uh, near zombie time is is a good is a good long, right? We're going into zombie. We've been grinding. Right. This is not how a low hanging fruit should be acting to me. And I know Tom would say the same where Tom's looking for that one pop. He's looking to cover that wash. And if we see the low hanging fruit grinding higher and higher and higher, you do not want to see that um, for low hanging fruit. So I think if we're hovering VWAP on a low hanging fruit, getting close to 1030, you know, and we're getting this type of volume situation where we get some volume, we cool off for a little bit. You know, this is still pretty decent volume per candle. Like we're still getting like 150,000, 200 uh, K per candle on a low hanging fruit. That's pretty abnormal to me. Um, and uh, yeah, I think just as we're hovering VWAP, we're going into zombie, we see the volume start to ramp up. Good sells up here, right? Right above the high a day. Great sells. Um, and then he took another one on the similar setup, right? So we get this volume, we consolidate for a little bit, we're still hovering VWAP and yeah, he's selling. Um, the only thing I would say is that I don't really like these just cause like you've already had a one and done, you have another one and done. You almost kind of got lucky on the second setup. Like it's a pattern. The stock likes to do this type of stuff where we get some volume over high of A, we come back down, we consolidate, we get another leg higher. But to me, it's like you're going back to the well because you probably weren't happy with whatever you made or you, you use less size or whatever. But I like it. Um, I love the hovering VWAP. Uh, it's great. Just 
you know, stuff like this, once we're above VWAP and like your trade ideas already happened, like there's no point in going back again. If you thought that this was going to go higher, you could have held half and then stopped out the other half right here, right? And you could have said, okay, I'm going to sell half here, hope for up here, but if it doesn't work out, I'll stop out when it starts to break down. You could have done that instead. Um, so yeah, you know, I like it. So, you know, Harry, Harry, let me add one thing. I love the way Harry laid that down, man. That, that was, he's totally right, man. Like the dry up of volume and then the reclaim, the higher lows, that was so good. I have bittersweet with this because the day before was just slaughtered. So I, I, I never like when I did long, I never liked longing something after such a day where it got slaughtered, but Harry's right, man. The, the tightening price action, the higher lows, and, and then the ramps off VWAP, it's pretty much over VWAP. It's showing that it can't break down. And most importantly, it hasn't broken down on the week chart. If you pull up the week, you don't have to, Harry. I'm just saying. Yeah. If you guys do go pull up the week chart, there's this key level that it like hasn't broke down for a week. And on that hold, even after the previous day of getting slaughtered, like if it's not breaking that key level for a week, well, there you go. So, I mean, I don't hate this trade. I just do think I, it's not my comfort zone personally to long something after such a slaughter day. But honestly, bro, is if we're just talking about price action in the intraday, what you did, it's pretty fucking solid. Honestly, yeah. it's pretty solid. Yeah. Tommy? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not long biased, but you guys can see what I meant by this, you know, compared to that long form cup Joe or like, you know, what, whatever his name is, you see the grinding higher, you know, not grinding lower, like the previous long, I'm trying to guess the bottom. Right, this, correct. This guy did perfectly. I mean, even, you know, entry, patient with the exits. Yeah, didn't work here. He cut it right away. But you can see, you know, how tired is, or like his risk management was compared to this one. So his winner, it's always bigger than his loser. Right. That's how you're going to stay profitable. That's it. Tom, yeah. Tom can, uh, I'll just add one more thing, because you just I, again, we're feeding off each other and I'm getting better at my commentary because of you guys. And dude, you literally just laid yep. it down. That's exactly what I was trying to say. I just didn't know how to word it until right now is if you guys see the, the one that the cup of Joe did, which is OK, we're not still beating on you. Sorry, buddy. But you were the pre market was like this. Okay, right. So this is what the previous day looks like a little bit into the close on on the previous day. So like if this was like the, you know, the previous day, or sorry, if this was like the previous day, and this is like the um, pre market right here. But as we noticed today, you know, on this day in the pre-market, it was sideways. It wasn't off a cliff. So I think one of the most important things that you can consider in trading, and believe me, for the last nine years of my career, I that's all I consider. Uh, on top of other things that I can couple factor, but what is pre-market doing? It's it's like the, the indication of all indications of what's going to happen intraday. I think pre-market is some of the most important things you can focus on. Yeah. And it's not off a cliff. That's what I was saying. Like, I don't love this for a long because the previous day was off a cliff, but the pre-market was very much stabilized. And then we get tightening and then we get higher lows. Yeah. So... I, I got to tell you, man, I don't hate this at all. It's not my comfort zone, but you know what? I, I can't beat the guy up for this trade. He did good. Yeah, He did good. Yeah, and also for me, if I'm looking to long something multi-day, I'd like a chart like this, right? I, I For anything multi-day, I like after day two, okay? So day two, I'm not interested in longing, but like anything after day two, if we're still holding a key support level, it gets interesting, right? So let's say we have the day. And yeah, we pull back here, right? And let's say this is day one. And on day number two, we get this low hang fruit pop, but we're still hanging around here, okay? Right? This, this type of chart would be interesting for me for a long because now I have a predefined risk. I'm seeing that this stock cannot break a key support level. The pre-market isn't off a cliff. And we're kind of consolidating. This stock is resting for another grind higher. Whereas on the other SIGA trade, we're trying to long something after it's been off a cliff, right? We're just, you know, it's just a dead cat bounce at that point, right? So if we kind of have this pop and on day two, we kind of chill around and just grind around and we don't really go anywhere. And on day three, we start to get some volume increasing again for a push higher. 
then I would look for it for a long because obviously this stuff on day three and day four should be dead. It's holding a key support level. I have a set predefined risk that if this breaks this death line, I know to get out. And I'm also saying, okay, I'm following the volume. And also the fact that this stock should have broken down. Day two should just be a dead cat bounce. We should keep going lower. Anything after day three, day four, you want to avoid short. And maybe you can look for it as, as a long. If we're doing good, consistent volume, you have a good risk. We're over VWAP and the pre-market isn't off a goddamn cliff. Then maybe you can take a look at it. But that's just my point of view. Dude, I love it, man. There's a lot of lessons in every single chart today. This is great, man. Yeah, I try and pick the ones with like the best lessons almost. Harry, you killed it this week, dude. Every single chart, I just want to like write a symphony of commentary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I've only put like, you know, 12 or 13 charts because I know there's so many lessons and especially with three of us or four or five mods, you know, oh, yeah. you can really go. I just, just really good explanation, man. You killed it. Thanks, bro. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. So this one, again, uh, we have another good lesson in this one here. It definitely looks like it. I'm going to pull it up on the TD Ameritrade. Let's see. Yeah. So this is, uh, he said, set up his first resistance. Here's how I feel on this one. I think instead of adding on high a day, you should have just stopped out and not averaged down. He ends up getting in a big mess up here. He ends up just fighting afterward. You could have just cut and reattacked higher into your line. You know, we've gone over FTOS charts multiple times. Um, you know, again, we're, we're closer to the range. The line you picked is, is at the range. Uh, the volume is ramping up. See, here's the thing for me. Here's the thing that I see on this one. All pre-market, there is no volume. So where is your immediate supply? Not there, okay? Not there for this line, right? So uh, you have no immediate supply uh, right away. And as we ramp up in the morning, we're doing 1.4 million volume. And then we're doing uh, 2.8 out of the halt. We're doing over a million volume of candle. So this demand at the open overwhelms anything that you've got in that pre-market. Pre-market, we want to rely on the immediate bag holders. If you are taking a short at 1.2 and there is no volume there and it's just faded down, you know, under 100K, under 50K, uh, yeah, you don't, you don't want to short there just because of the fact that this demand at the open is overwhelming all the supply in the pre-market, right? So to me, this is just an avoid. You see this stuff getting... Uh, you know, one mil volume on a very, very low, low, low volume, low liquidity chart. I mean, there's just no meat to short there, right? To me as a long, I love this because I know every single short thinks that it is a broken chart, but it's not, it's tricking you. Look at the volume down here. There's nothing. The volume has overwhelmed all the supply uh, right off the, uh, right off the, you know, right off the bat. That's it. Dude, uh, okay, so much to say about this one. This is such a good example. Oh my God, you guys are going to learn some cool shit. Well, you already did with Harry, but yes, fake broken. So number one, I know what you're saying, Tosh. It hasn't touched VWAP in an hour and it's way broken under VWAP. Let's, let's short the VWAP push, right? No, because on something like this, first off, where's, okay, so like where did it start? 88 cents or something? And a high of 130, and it's opening here. At, again, remember these stocks, man, they try to hold a dollar, dude. Why do you think I hate these fucking stocks? 90 cents to a dollar 30. I don't like these, bro. They are trying to hold a dollar as much as they can, and they will because these are shells of companies and there's endless manipulation. So I know you're like Tosh, it's broken under VWAP. There's overhead, it's opening far from VWAP. We should hit a push to VWAP. No, because it's 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 that it's that fake broken down that Harry was talking about. This rush of demand is so easy to pump. Um, you know, the, your first warning sign, man, is that is that dollar hold, dude. That's your first warning sign. Is literally like they're gonna do anything they can to keep it over a dollar. So this is not something you should be excited about. And and I have lost so much money in my career on this setup specifically, and I'll tell you why, guys never short something that has such a fucking opposite death candle bullish push candle.
Never. It's just not a good idea. It's not like you want to trickle, but the, the how do I even say it, Harry? That rush, that teleport, you don't shorten the teleports. Do not. So, so you shouldn't have had fantasy orders on this one regardless. And then second, if you didn't and you were just waiting, oh, like if it gets to BWAP, let me hit it. No, do not short teleports, man. It's like shorting a bull on steroids charging you. Can it work? Sure. Most of the time you're going to get chomped. <laughs> what the hell is that picture? <laughs> These guys stock trading in a the Those point are Val's cousins. Oh my God. Of course they are, bro. Seriously. Uh, my point is, guys, never, never, never short a teleport. I, I have lost endless amounts of money doing that and then i had to make it back <laughs> so and then you lose it in two seconds then you feel like a real asshole because you're like dude i literally like i don't even know why i lost it was too quick it was like speed the speedy road runner it's like why did i even lose it was so quick it was just flash you're gone you're stopped out yeah exactly um the re-attacks i i i uh just i don't know i would not ne- i this is not something to go back into in my opinion until maybe what the hell's my an i just avoid this shit man like you've lost on it once you're obviously going to be emotional stop the, out over high day Leave yeah it. this is the only one i'll give you because it did kind of set a top here and you're going off the two but this is the only action i'll be forgiving but i still wouldn't touch it i just these one dollar stocks man see the, when this works every time let me clear my um let me clear my set so you can see clearly when this works, the VWAP push and the overhead and the opening far from VWAP, and then you get that takedown, guys, or when stocks have range, that's when it works. Yeah. So this is, you know, $2 and then this is $5. That's when it works every time. But 90 cents to $1.30, no, no shot. I'm, you're, I'm just not going to take a trade like this because yeah. this they're going to hold one. They're going to hold one. And the pumpers know this and it lures in, uh, like Steven just said, oh my God, this is why I was like, dude, he literally just said it. I'm going to read it. Steven, where did you just say that thing? He goes, I never short right above one or two whole dollar numbers. Too many bad longs with small accounts going in, all in on them, in my opinion. They often find support there, guys. You have to think every 18-year-old kid with a $500 account can afford a shit ton of shares in a one dollar stock. Yeah. Do you see? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. The the, the 18 year old who doesn't know anything about stocks is not longing in 500 shares when a stock is at three down from five. He's doing it at you know one. Yeah. It it happens again and again, man. Avoid these one dollar stocks on the short side if you can, and look for what Harry was saying. Fake the man and launch that bitch. Yeah. I think just to sum this chart up, number one, tiny range. Number two, not a lot of immediate bag holders, right? There's not that many people stuck long on this chart. There's not that much volume. It looks fake broken. It's really not. Number uh, three or four is just the overwhelming volume and demand at the open. Something's wrong. We shouldn't be doing this much volume on a tight ranged chart like this. Um, that is right. the red flag. This stock should be broken. We shouldn't be doing that much volume. That's scary. Do not touch that. There's something else that's going on here. And um, I think also one lesson here would be no need to reattack, bro. Make your money back on a real broken stock. This could have easily kept going. You got, in my opinion, lucky due to the market sentiment. If this had been COVID, you would have blown up out of the water. Oh, let, yeah, dude. Oh my God, guys. Say that again, Harry. Say that again. If this was COVID, this would have gone to fucking $7. Yeah, dude. exactly. And look, he's short from 1.2 covering, you know, 1.8. You're not going to make that back. Oh, it's just too dangerous. It's you're just not even going to make half it back. Just avoid this ticker. It's abnormal. It's not for shorts. You know, it could zombie back. If it's trapped once, it can trap again. Um, so yeah, I would definitely avoid this one. Uh, you know, let it be, let it go. Uh, you know, it got you once maybe, maybe, you know, you can reattack it on a, on a day two or a day three and it, it'll do an offering for you or something like that. But, you know, again, it's very easy to fight. Fighting is easier than not fighting. Yep. You know, it's easier to fight than to, to not fight. Right. You want to go back. You want to reattack. You're like, God damn, that bitch got me. I'm going to, I'm going to get it back. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. I'm going to keep fighting. Right. 
you know, you, instead of the fighting brain, you should be using your flight brain. You should be getting out of your seat, shutting down and just leaving it. This is obviously anyone using any type of size. This is a max loss, right? 1.2 to 1.8. I mean, that's, that's a large percent move, right? So and it's very quick and it's very it's, quick. It's very quick. It, it's easy to get emotional and you can even tell in his, in his, you know, next trades, right? He's emotional. He's upset. And, and it, it, that's normal, right? But instead of fighting, you got to leave. Um, what would have happened if this went to 250, right? You would have lost two times, three times, right? You're like, oh, I'm going to size in more. I'm going to size in more. I think really just the lessons, you know, on this stock, you know, can really help you in the future to not take these losses, the volume, the range, just everything about this ticker is just avoid the short, guys. Harry, last thing I'll say, because I'm adding to exactly what you just said. Guys, the number one thing that Alex taught me in my career, because he mentored me with Dow many years ago, and what he still preaches, do you know what it is? It's called stock selection. So if you have four identical charts, because look, the price does look like that one. If you just go by pattern, the pattern does look like I should just hit it at VWAP because it broke. This is where stock selection is so important. Four stocks have the same pattern. One of them you're going to like the most. One of them you're going to like the least. You take a lot of things into consideration. The volume, what the range is. Why is it a $1 stock? Is it five to seven? Is it 90 cents? That, you, know, you see what I'm saying? Stock selection. Not every pattern plays out perfectly because within four of identical stocks, it's still about stock selection and picking the best ones. This, was, this would not have been in my stock selection by the time open that I am willing or executing to trade on. This is one of those ones where I go, you know what? I, I If a couple things more lined up and it had a little bit higher, you know, up to two pre-market, it had a lot more volume. And now I know people are stuck. Maybe I'll add this, but this is where stock selection is so important because it is tempting. But yep. then once you play something like this, then you freaking lose your freaking ass, dude. Yep. Tommy, do you have anything to say before we kind of wrap it up? Yeah, uh, this one, uh, you know, I took a loss on this one as well. This was on my watch list. The reason why I did that is, uh, you know, top is set, uh, broken the pre-market. This volume, because of the PR, was right at the open. Uh, I, cut, I cut it here after, you know, the pre-market high. And this is like the, the lessons I want to tell him uh, that, you know, it's like, maybe too soon here, but the stop should have been over pre-market high, okay? Always, always. In whatever you do, if stock breaks pre-market high, you have to stop out. I don't care if it's, you know, I'm stopping out right at the top and shit tanks after that, no. You know, over pre-market high, you have to stop out. And all this after, I have no comment on that because it's, you know, this is like formal revenge trading and yeah, so emotional. on. It's emotional. Yeah. So, you know, like uh, I'm, I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, that person knows what, uh, you know, he's doing. Uh, but the stop here, it's like, this is no, you're not like you let a stop go against you 40 cents. You add, you even add it more. This ad is the, the, I think is the crucial one, right? Like, what are you trying to do here? It's trying tempting, to bring up, right? it's yeah. tempting. Yeah, but what, I, I mean, what, what are you trying to do here? Stock clearly gave you the confirmation that, hey, I'm strong as fuck with the volume, okay? You need to get out. But no, I want to keep fighting you. I want to add more. I just don't get it. This ad is terrible, okay? You could, get a, you could have got killed in this one if it gets to like two or 250. If shock like teleports and holds it, you know, twice or three times, you're dead. So, uh, you know, this initial, I'm okay with that because, you know, that was my plan as well. Maybe that person followed that uh, watch list, but I cut it here. But Tom, you did it. You did exactly what you should do. It is a tempting stock. So if you do trade it, you should be stopping out if it breaks high days. Tom, you did it perfectly, bro. We're not. Yeah, I, I, I even said, I think watch list was like scale from 1.2 to 1.4, stop over 1.4. And, and, and that's, that's it. the perfect plan if you do plan to hit this. Yeah. So, dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, even your loss, you did it right. That's yeah. the point. Guys. That's all. Yeah. So the key lessons here, pre-market high, guys. Be careful. Okay. If it breaks that, get the fuck out. Seriously, man. Don't look back. Adding, okay. Not adding. Yeah.
don't look back. That's all. Yeah. Well, I think this is the uh, last chart for today. Time to wrap it up. Uh, Harry, let me say one thing, guys, because I've had so much demand and I have been a little slow to it. Guys, if you have reached out to me for the flash sale on Lifetime, I'm so sorry if like maybe you missed a message from me or uh, we, you know, you didn't get all your questions. And I, I think I got back to everybody. But if anybody is looking to take advantage of that sale that's here for a little bit longer, um, it is a massive flash sale on Lifetime specifically. So um, I, I literally 3000 DMs, 20 million calls. If you fell through the cracks, I'm so sorry. Message me again and we could talk about that. I just want to make sure that I'm, I'm not forget. Believe me, I, I wish I had two clones of myself man, to be in chat all day to do the background work. It's like, <laughs> I love you guys. I'm <laughs> trying to do it all. <laughs> all right. Also, I was going to take a birthday shot at the end. So let's go. <laughs> nice shot. Um, I'm proud of you, man. Like, like one, one shot. That's it. The whole bottle. Just, Come I'm on. I can take a whole bottle on here. <laughs> no, James would be pounding a whole fireball right now, dude. I just wanted to say it's my birthday. Uh, you know, thanks a lot for everyone joining Weekend Mentoring. Thanks for everyone showing up. We got it, bro. Thank you to the whole MIC family. Tom, Tosh, Bao, Alex, absolutely fucking everyone. We're halfway yeah. through the year, boys. Let's Dude. fucking finish the, the last part of the year strong. Let's you get got- it going. Fucking everyone, take a fucking shot. Let's go. Let's fucking party. It's my fucking birthday. Thank you to fuck every single person, every goddamn DM. We fucking love you, everyone. At I love party. you, bro. So let's fucking go. I Great think job. Harry's already Happy drunk. Birthday. He's been drinking since he woke up. Let's go. Let's go, boys. Love it. All right. Love it, dude. Happy birthday, buddy. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday, bro. Love we'll you. Fucking end this shit right now. Thanks, everyone, for showing up. Thanks, everyone. Gosh, everyone. See you guys. Was a great one. Yeah. Dude, go have a fun day, buddy. Yep. See ya. See you guys guys. later, bro. Peace.